Now, zip down to verse 17. This is why it's so important to realize prophecy is real. It proves God. He's reliable. You can trust in him because, because trusting God determines your destiny. Verse 17, thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit, who leads you by the way you should go. I'm the only one that knows the map for your life. I'm the only one that knows what you need to know to make it through life. Verse 18, oh, that you had heeded my commandments. This is what God offers. Then your peace would have been like a river. You know what I love about rivers? You can take some water out of it and it just more comes. It's just a lake you could, you could theoretically empty. A river, by nature, is, is something coming further upstream that's flowing. And he says, my, my peace I offer to you. Look what it says there. Your peace would have been like a river. It's an endless, and he says, I am the headwaters, and I am going to just flow peace into your life. If you just believe me, the God who has attested to his reality through prophecy. You see, the key to all this blessing of verse 18 is prophecy. Knowing down deep in your heart there's only one God. Because he has shown that he is the God of the universe because he is the only one that can tell the future. He said that's the acid test. For you to know that I am God, the God you can't see, the God you can't touch, the God you, you have never met in the physical world other than through his creation. I want you to know that I'm real because I have told you the future. And when it occurs, you know I'm reliable. So he said, my peace will be like the river. Look at the end of verse 18. And your righteousness like the waves of the sea. I love the ocean too. Because people can mess it up all they want. They can drag their feet as they walk down the shore. They can dig it up and make holes and build sandcastles and everything else. And even leave their trash. And what happens? The relentless waves come. And after every wave gets through, it just flattens it all back out. Smooth and perfect again. And takes all the trash and throws it up you know, on the beach and leaves that, that sandy strip just perfect again for the next set of footprints and buckets and shovels to go through. And he said, that's what my righteousness in you can be. I can make you have an endless cleansing, an endless newness. That's why we call God the God of new beginnings. And that's why Christians live in a river of peace with our righteousness like waves of the sea washing over us and God making us new and new and new. The Christian life is a series of new beginnings. So prophecy is the key, and prophecy is big in the Bible. Almost a third of the Bible is prophetic. Scholars have given their lives to study this. One man, I love his work, it's this thick, uh, and it's his life's work. His name was J. Barton Payne. And, and he looked at every verse of the Bible. He was a Hebrew and Greek scholar, spent his life uh, only doing that. And he looked at every verse and studied and, and cataloged and codified them. And then he wrote his lifetime in this encyclopedia. I'll reduce it down to three lines, okay? This is what he says. There are 31,124 verses in the Bible. Okay, so that's, he counted them. Of these, 8,352 have prophecies. Point three, almost a third of the Bible is prophetic. Wait a minute. God says prophecy is a test to show who's God. Number two, God says prophecy proves I'm real. Number three, prophecy proves I'm reliable, God says. Number four, prophecy reveals you can trust me, God says. Number five, trusting God re determines your destiny. So prophecy is the key. And guess what? Almost a third of this book you hold, as it was written, contained explanations in detail of what would happen in the future. Now, about, oh, maybe 20% of those, maybe 30, have already been fulfilled, exactly like God said they would be. God has 100% reliability, and so every other thing he said is going to also happen just as he predicted. 